if you're not working every muscle group, you are going to be missing out on a lot of your biological potential. Your body. You've just tuned into Rebel Wellness Podcast, your resource for realigning and revitalizing your health and well being. I'm your host, Kaylee, also known as Coach Kales. I'm a holistic health educator, certified nutritionist, and fitness professional of nearly a decade. I'm stoked to have you with us. You just joined a community of amazing souls who are ready to break free from the confines of the often outdated and confusing health advice all around us. Living in a world overwhelmed by quick fix diets and unrealistic beauty and body standards, us rebels stand for change. If you're like me, you're exhausted with the confusion and polarization plaguing the social media health scene. My mission is to empower you to step beyond today's diet culture, adopt a holistic health approach paired with the foundations of science for lasting, well-rounded wellness. Through teaching you how to tune in and embrace your mind, body, and soul, we'll reject one-size-fits-all solutions, realigning you on a better path that honors your unique needs and values. With new episodes weekly, this podcast is your sanctuary for deep wellness exploration, featuring expert advice, real life stories, and a true commitment to your growth. Your journey to better health and simplicity in life begins now. Let's jump right in. What's up, Rebel? Welcome back. We are coming to the last couple of episodes of Hot Take Summer for our season two series. And if you are new here, welcome to the podcast. Love that you are here. If you are a return offender, (laughs) uh, love you. Thank you for being here. I appreciate the support so much. And I do want to take a second there to ask you a big favor. If you are somebody who loves our podcast and supports it, the best way you can support it is by subscribing to us or actually just resharing or writing a review, um, rating the podcast, you know, that really helps us grow because it helps the algorithm know that people like the podcast. (laughs) And we are definitely still in our growing phase. So I would absolutely love it if you would take a moment and do that. Or if you are new here and you liked this episode, I would love you to review it as well. Okay, so something I wanted to kind of discuss is that we are going to chat about a fitness thing today. You know, I've been taking a little time off of talking about some of the fitness stuff, but as a lot of you guys know, I have been a professional fitness coach for the last decade, and it's something that is just like I know the back of my hand. You know, I'm always learning. We're always learning in this industry and any industry, especially like nutrition too, which I think is why both nutrition and fitness can be so complicated because there are just so many different angles to come at things. And as new science kind of comes out, it makes it harder because, you know, like we've completely changed how we understand squats. Like Astagrass is actually not better for you. It is not the ultimate form for a good solid squat. You know, you actually get a lot of hamstring disengagement and even some glute disengagement at the bottom if you go that deep for a lot of people, you know. But again, it's it's something where like it's okay if you still prefer to do astagrass, you know. Uh, it's, it kind of really depends on your body and your goals. So as a female fitness coach, I mean, I've trained males. I still train males. I've probably trained, I don't know, at least a hundred males over the last 10 years. And there's just a lot of unique things that I think a person can understand about their body and understanding fitness for their unique body and structure. And so I kind of want to continue today's conversation throughout the rest of this year or, you know, season three, where we're going to kind of discuss a little bit more about some unique or nuancey things that can kind of be lesser spoken about in the like social media space by those who are like not like long-term fitness professionals or people who have actually worked with a lot of different bodies because I want you guys to feel like you can take what you learn about fitness and apply it to yourself, but like in the way where you can customize it. You know what I mean? Because it is totally not a one size fits all. I mean, some fitness kind of kind of is, but really it isn't. Because if you look at your body and then you look at your best friends and then you look at your partners and you look at your parents, you know, there could be quite a bit of similarities, but odds are that like your 
quads and or like your femur length is shorter than your friends or your friends is shorter than yours and like, if you're you know, like not to make it complicated but like anything down to like that like structurally can give some people advantages some people more challenges you know like the a old client of mine learned that his whole family has this weird malformation of a hip socket where it is not completely round. And so it causes hip issues, which causes issues in any movement that you do with two legs. So squats, you know, um, lunges, etc. And like things like that matter, you know, so maybe a pain that you've been experiencing is actually because of your own structure. Maybe it's not just you doing something wrong. You know what I mean? And the whole reason I'm kind of blabbering on about that is I just want to make sure that you understand as we go into any fitness chat, here or in the past or in the future that we have on this podcast, it's important for you to understand that it's not one size fits all. And it's always just recommendations from my experience personally. And I want you to take it and apply it to your life, see what works, see what doesn't, you know, it's not a big deal if it doesn't work for you. And if it does work for you, which especially today's conversation, it should, (laughs) because today's is a little bit more of a one size fits all. Um, But it is really important for you to think about that, you know, and just get into your body. I really love when my clients can actually learn, you know, fatigue cues, or just even cues where they know they're just being like lazier and they can push themselves harder. You know, there's so many different ways that we, our brain communicates with our body and we really shortchange our ability to push harder, go longer, lift heavier, you know? And I think that I've personally experienced when I train myself, like when I coach myself and I push myself harder, that's when I start to see the actual success and the progress that I'm seeking, you know what I mean? And at the same time, you know, like there's times where like even today, I knew that my recovery based off my aura ring and how my body feels is not prime for lifting heavy. And when I go into the gym next, I want to lift heavy again. So I skipped the gym today, you know, and normally I love to hit the gym exactly on Mondays. Everything that we talk about today is more about structure of an effective weightlifting session. So it's not entirely um, the same as like what exercises you do or what modes of fitness you do, anything like that. But today is going to be really eye-opening if you have never worked with a professional fitness coach or followed a program or anything like that. I mean, unfortunately, there's a lot of like Fitspo girls that um, are utilizing performance enhancing drugs to get the bodies they have and or have uh, just zero accreditation in program design and things like that for the general population. And so you might be following a routine that just kind of was generically thrown together, or maybe they copied what their old coach, if they did a bodybuilding competition, like put together for them and everybody's going to be at a different place. So when I talk about today's episode, which, you know, you already saw the title, but uh, I'm talking about the best way to structure an effective weightlifting session specifically for females. When we talk about this today, I do want you to know that this mostly is applying to those of my girlies who are into going to the gym and having a solid weightlifting session, or if you are going to maybe a small group class with fitness and strength training. This isn't entirely the same for like aerobic fitness sports, running, cycling, swimming, you know, all that kind of stuff. Um, So just know that today we're specifically discussing when you're preparing and executing a strength training session. Okay. So weightlifting at any capacity it doesn't have to be CrossFit or anything like that. It's more like you go into your gym and you do dumbbell work, kettlebell work, barbell work, machine work, yada, yada. Okay. So I'm really excited about this conversation today. I think it'll be really helpful for you, especially if you are a fitness girly. I mean, I think my, my sister told me that apparently the term is muscle mommies. If you are a aspiring muscle mommy. <laughs> And you want to be a better mommy, apparently. (laughs) This is going to be a really good chat for you. But real quick, I want to invite you, come join my wellness newsletter. It's a one time a month wellness newsletter where I discuss all the things 
going on right now in the now wellness. And I give you a lot of my pro tips and advice, as well as like any keeping up with me, keeping up with Kales, you know, that is going to be your best place to do that. And that is at coachkales.com. You can sign up for the newsletter anywhere on there and come join our Instagram community at Rebel Wellness Podcast or at Kaylee Loren. Those are going to be your best places to, um, you know, interact like face to face ish, you know, and <laughs> throw me a DM, say hello, or I will try to say hello to you too, if I catch you um, on my follows. But the other thing that's really important to check out is our show notes. It's going to be your best tickets to all the hot links to everything we talk about, and maybe some things we don't talk about, including a bunch of my new freebies that I have been rolling out for you guys. So go download those. Those things are great. All right, let's jump into this episode. All right. So you may be thinking like, what do I mean structuring an effective weightlifting session? So for any of the newbie or intro, you know, intermediate weightlifters, usually if you're a seasoned professional or like you've been training for a long time, you know, this chat actually could still be very effective for you to listen to, to just make sure that you have it down. However, you probably already do a lot of this stuff. So it's just kind of probably going to be good for jogging your memory and making sure that you're hitting, checking all the boxes. But for, for all my beginner lifters or intermediate lifters, you know, you've been lifting for maybe less than three years. You've not had specific attention from a professional, a fitness professional, you know, a trainer, a coach, whatever. Um, and I'm not talking about high school sports having an athletic coach from that or anything like those, that category, because even though you do get good assistance and direction, from my experience, most of the coaches in schooling systems are still kind of archaic with the way they program things and what they teach kids. There's too many kids. They're all kids with a ton of energy. So they kind of just streamline it down to the basics. They figure out oh, you're young girl. You'll, you'll, if you hurt yourself, you'll bounce back, whatever. However, I have people in my life that unfortunately have gotten chronically injured from their uh, athletic coaches and stuff like that, just negligence that happens. So anything that you might have prior learned about structuring a effective weightlifting session. Otherwise, you know, that sometimes is referred to as program. Like what is your program or what is your workout? Like when you step into the gym, what do you do? Like, how do you do it? How do you structure what you're going to do when you go in there? Okay. That's what I'm talking about when I talk about structuring an effective weightlifting session. But a lot of the stuff that you've learned previously, like I was just saying, you may want to kind of, I don't want to just say like throw it out the window, like as if my version is the best version, but I will say that this version of how I structure all of my clients fitness sessions, weightlifting sessions, has always been very effective and very foolproof when it comes to preventing injuries, having longevity success, and making sure that you enjoy your workout, that you're not just like beat up and miserable and not wanting to touch a barbell ever again. (laughs) So I would recommend maybe kind of just setting off to the side some prior advice you've gotten. And sometimes too, there's there's quite a bit of people on, on social media that shouldn't really be sharing as much as they share with their workouts and things like that. And so just be very conscientious about how you um perceive any of the fitness information that you get. Okay. So first thing that I want to talk about when you're structuring a workout. So let's let's kind of walk you through it. So you go into the gym, you want to lift some heavy things, okay? What you need to do is dynamic warm up first. And I would recommend you pause this, make like little notes in your phone or write it down, whatever, so that you can cross check if like you do do this when you go into the gym yourself. You need a dynamic warm up, sis. Okay, so what that is, is you're preparing your body for action. Why this is so key is like you'll see people, or maybe you've been that person. I know early in my fitness career, I was that person. You don't really know what the heck you're doing when you go to the gym. So some people will just like walk in, maybe like twist their torso side to side in this weird kind of half assed warm up thing, and then like pick up the weights and start going. Or they'll go on a cardio machine for like 10 to 20 to 30 minutes to get cardio done and then weight lift. No no's, big no no's, okay? What you want to do is you want to find ways to move your body through the range of motion that you're going to lift that day. So if you have no idea what program to be doing, like you walk into the gym and you're just kind of doing 
okay, today I'm doing squats. Okay, I'm going to do machines, you know. If you don't have a system or a program like set into place as far as what you're weightlifting, how many sets, how many reps, why, you know, the structure of that, I highly recommend you do that first. <laughs> you need to get on a program that you can follow. And I am actually working on building out some good basic programs for you guys. So keep an eye on my stand store. Again, you can find the links in the show notes or on my website to get access to those. I have been busily working on that. So that's kind of an exciting little sneak peek. But with that said, you want to make sure that you understand like, okay, I'm doing legs today, lower body. Then I'm going to make sure that I dynamically activate my lower body with body weight lunges. You know, you can do band work, you can do lighter weight warm-ups of the same workouts that you plan to do. So maybe you do a kettlebell, like a goblet squat, where you do like 10 or 15 pound kettlebell and you hold it at your chest and you squat into the range of motion that you're going to be working so you can warm up those muscles. Basically, you're looking to create heat in the body and activate those muscle fibers because when those muscle fibers are like all awake and firing through you putting them through the motions that you're going to be doing, it allows your body to not only prevent injury by not being like surprised, like all of a sudden I've got all this weight on me, but it also allows more of your musculature to participate in the activity from the get. So that's where dynamic warm up is super key. And if you don't activate the muscles you're going to be using, odds are they're going to have a hard time firing, we call it, which means participating in the activity. <laughs> and if you're somebody who's trying to glow, grow your glutes or any of that kind of stuff, you really need to activate those glutes someone that I would recommend for good warm-ups, especially dynamic warm-ups, or even some kind of, we call it prehab style. So prehab is kind of when you are taking your body through rehab style movements, but in an effort to avoid having to actually do it for rehab, like post-injury. Um, and that would be Connor Harris and the prehab guys. Both of those pages on Instagram are great for People that I think are actually really good at what they do when it comes to like biomechanics and things like that and telling you how to better activate things with good tutorials to walk through. That's not my specialty. I mean, it is something that I am good at with my clients in person, but it's not something that I make social media posts about. So <laughs> I would highly recommend them. But I would say that some of that stuff like is is definitely important to learn your body. And so those guys are really great at kind of walking you through it. But there's quite a few uh, great people in there. I know there's there's somebody I'm blanking on and she is really great at that stuff too, but I just can't remember her name. And I'm not sure if she stopped posting because she's a new mom and stuff. I don't know. Sorry guys. Anyways, random tangent. But there's a great amount of like, especially like, if you want to follow females and female body work stuff, there is definitely quite a bit of them available on social media. But those would be great people to follow if you're looking for dynamic warm up inspiration, I would say. But it definitely is an essential thing that you need to spend at least five to 10 minutes about in the gym when you go in. So go to the mat station or whatever. But I would also say if you are coming in cold, you know, like completely you've been working all day or like you just woke up, whatever it is, and you need to warm up maximum of five minutes, maybe maximum 10, but five minutes of just a little moderate cardio to get kind of that donut glaze kind of sweat going on where your body starts to feel warm. That is a essential component to a dynamic warm up. So ideally, one of the best things you could do is go do that for about five minutes, then come into whatever your ab station or wherever there's space for you to do some dynamic body movements like your lunging. Um, you can look up a warm up called the world's greatest. That is a really good full body warm up, you know, body weight movements of any type, body weight squats, body weight deadlifts, body weight lunges, body weight um, push ups any of that kind of stuff is going to be really great for you, including band work. So I always like to activate like my lats. I like to do band pulls. Again, this is why I like to bring my own things. And that would be a good plug for my freebie download of the ultimate gym bag list. I have like an Amazon link list that I put together for you guys. That's a freebie on my website and on my stand store. But on that, I give you links to certain bands that I think are essential, especially for dynamic activation. So check that guy out. 
it will really help you kind of have the equipment necessary. Cause a lot of times like I'll get clients or just people I know and they'll be like, my gym doesn't have that. I'm like, well, you can have that. You have a gym bag, right? or buy a gym bag and buy your own bands, keep them in there. And now you're not sharing bands with like a bunch of random people. It's like win-win. So definitely make sure that you understand you need to at least spend the first 15 minutes of when you come into the gym, five minutes on cardio to get your blood flowing, and then five to 10 minutes doing dynamic motions that activate those muscles. Okay. Do not skip on it. Do not skip on it. Okay. Just so many of my clients, once they start doing that, especially on their own, when they go into the gym on their own, they're like, I can feel a difference in my glute activation when I do my dynamic warmups. And I'm like, yes, yes, you should. You should. That is, that is the reason we do it. <laughs> okay. So the next one that is really important for you to do when you're structuring your workout is get effective exercises in on the bulk of your workout. So when we think of a full workout plan, you're going to start with your dynamic activation and your warmups, and then you go into the core exercises. Okay. And the point of the core exercises is that you have a strong foundation overall in your body, because if you are not doing every, if you're not working every muscle group, you are going to be missing out on a lot of your biological potential. So your body, it's basically like how well can you develop all the muscles on your body to its fullest potential? And if you are not training upper body and lower body, front and back, you know, so chest and back, quads and hamstrings, you know, you're going to be missing out on a lot of good strength potential and you may put yourself at risk for more injuries because you'll have muscular imbalances. So when my girlies who just want to have bigger booty and better looking legs or whatever, completely skip out on upper body, you're missing out on a huge part of what makes a well-composed musculature. Okay. And you again are putting yourself at higher risk for injury. And you know, it's really ideal to have a strong upper body. There's so many things that you benefit from and you also need a strong upper body to get a strong lower body. If you're not keeping those balanced, you're going to be missing out on a ton. Okay. So again, like I said earlier, you need to make sure that you're following a program that makes sense. If you're not following a specific program, you're going to be just kind of haphazardly weightlifting. Okay. And sometimes you can get stronger in that for sure, but you're not going to see the results you want. You don't really get strong physique results by just showing up and moving weights uh, at any type. Like you feel like doing squats today. You feel like doing lunges tomorrow. You feel like doing some sort of seated row another day. And then next week you just do push ups and then you do, you know. I see that all the time because naturally we don't know what we're supposed to be doing in the gym, but there's so many great resources out there that are available for you to learn how to structure a workout routine. You also can pay for just a few sessions with a personal trainer to have them check your form, build you a program, and then you can follow it. You know, I do that all the time for a lot of my clients. And so there's options out there for you to get on a program. And then it's really great because not only do you start to see like good results of assuming you're following the program properly, you also feel like you know what the F you're doing at the gym. (laughs) You're showing up and you're like, okay, I'm following this. I'm not bored. I'm doing the things, you know, like this is, I'm, I have a reason to be here and I have a method to this madness. If you don't, odds are you're going to be like, the gym is boring. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm not seeing results, Blah, you know, and I see that a ton. So take the headache out of it and find yourself a program to follow. There's also a ton of free, amazing ones like bodybuilding.com and things like that, where you can get some pretty great with tutorials, exercise programs to follow. So I would highly recommend that you make sure that you're following a bunch of great programming that is going to support your goals. Okay. And I, you know, I can't tell you enough how many of it free resources there are for you. And, um, you know, that's just going to be really positive for your success long-term in the gym. And you really need to have those core exercises down. So compound movements, squats, deadlifts, pull-ups, push-ups, 
rows, you know, any of that kind of stuff. And you also want to make sure that you're always working your your core strength as well as your abdominals. So you you really want to have the whole picture and the whole package going on when you have a workout routine because it's just going to give you the best results long term. And you don't necessarily like you're not going to get big, okay? Everybody's like, "Oh, but I don't want to get bulky." Well, if you don't have a good eating plan, you know, and I have a million podcast episodes all about how you can get onto the right track for fat loss and or body recomposition, meaning losing fat and gaining muscle. And you, you need to be doing that high protein paired with your weightlifting. And if you don't have, for some reason, a ton of extremely excess testosterone, and if you are inducing a deficit, so you're losing body fat or you're not gaining it, it's really hard to get bulky as a female. We just do not simply have anywhere close to the same amount of testosterone as males do. And therefore, we can't put on muscle as fast as them, which is frustrating, but it doesn't mean that we're going, it means that we're not going to get bulky. It's such a myth, you know? And for girls who tend to look thicker, you know, at times my body's even been thicker and I have more muscle because I have retained my muscle and I've also put on fat. It's because now I have two layers of thicker tissue, you know, for besides girls who are skinny fat, who all they have is fat and hardly any muscle. They may look skinnier, but they're not metabolically that healthy and they're not strong. There's a whole lot of reasons that being skinny fat is not what it's <laughs> chalked up to be. So a stronger, fitter body is always going to be far more sexy in my mind than anybody who is just like restricting their food and doing the most minimal weights just because they're afraid to be bulky. Do not be afraid of that. Eat more, eat more protein, lift heavier. <laughs> Always. Okay, so the next part to that. So you've got your dynamic warm up, you go in and you do your core exercises, then you need to do a cool down. It matters because it facilitates recovery and it helps you with flexibility and just overall support healthier muscles in general. So again, do not walk into the gym, just pick up some weights, throw them around for a bit and then leave. Definitely spend again another like at least five up to 15 minutes doing a cool down or that is your best time to actually put in a bit of cardio. You should always put your cardio, your long-term cardio after your weightlifting. You need as much energy and nutrients aka glucose, as possible to go towards your weightlifting, then you put the rest towards your cardio, okay? So a lot of people ask that question all the time, so that's a little bonus fry. They say, should you do cardio before weightlifting? No, you should always do cardio after weightlifting because you need that energy and your energy is spent best weightlifting and weightlifting heavy than it is spent on aerobic activity. Arguably, I'd say if you're going to do an aerobic activity that's over 20 minutes, I would do that not on a weightlifting day or at a different time in the day, okay? And ideally later after, anything after that weightlifting. So for example, you weightlift at, and it's like 9 a.m., then if you're going to do like jogging or something like that, do that later in the day at like 3, 3 to 5 p.m., something like that. But I don't usually recommend running and weightlifting if you're going for muscle gain because there's this unique situation that happens with uh, runners, especially female runners, where you get this muscle pare down effect where your body needs to get more effective with um, maintaining your muscle mass. And so it stops It puts kind of a pause on your muscle gain. And for people who don't eat enough protein and who train overtrain, they end up losing muscle mass because when they're running, their body breaks it down and then utilizes those amino acids for different systems it needs to do because you're not eating enough protein. So again, highly recommend you (laughs) increase your protein to at minimum 100 grams of quality complete protein a day. If you are somebody who's trying to build muscle or is just more athletic in general, whether it's anaerobic activity, aka weightlifting, or aerobic activity, aka running, swimming, biking, yada, yada. So that's really important for you to make sure that you are doing that after when you're into the cool down phase, okay? So you can splice that into your core exercises, like post-core exercises, and then you can go into cool down where you can either just do a light walk on the treadmill and then go foam roll, do some stretches, you know, some deeper stretches. I always like to do like pigeon pose, figure four stretch, strap work, you know, using one of those yoga straps to kind of stretch out your legs. The most minimal thing you can do 
to help yourself in cool down is going to be foam rolling. Okay. Spend a couple of minutes foam rolling each major muscle group. Go for your hamstrings, go for your calves, go for your quads, go for your glutes, go for your back. You know, you're really going to do so much better, especially on leg days. If you just spend a little bit of time foam rolling. Sometimes people ask me like how many passes, um, as far as like rolling up and down, kind of like a rolling pin, you know, on your legs and it gets better. You know, everybody always starts off and be like, Oh, but it hurts so bad. It will get better. That means that your fascia is super angry. Okay. So just stick to it. Trust me. And then you'll start to realize you want a harder foam roller (laughs) and you'll be like, Oh, this is not enough. Um, so Foam rolling, I usually say anywhere from six to 10 passes per muscle. So if you're rolling out a hamstring, roll on it back and forth six to 10 times and switch to the next one, you know, and so forth. So definitely need to cool down. It helps, you know, move out a lot of the different acids that are released when you're strength training. It helps support the fascia that can sometimes bunch up when you're weightlifting. It tends to always bunch up when you're weightlifting. And it really helps with recovery long-term when you sleep and all that kind of stuff. So you really need to not skip out on that. Okay. So let's recap, guys. The best way for you to walk into the gym and structure your entire weightlifting session is to start with a dynamic warm up, activate those muscles, get the blood flowing, you know, prepare your body for movement. Then you go into your core exercises, make sure that you are doing something that is specific and makes sense for what your goal is with fitness, okay? Then you're going to go into your cool down to make sure that you're facilitating good recovery and taking care of your body because weightlifting is a stressor and it is somewhat trauma to the body. So you need to take care of your body. And if you skip out on that, you are looking at a higher chance of injury or just poor recovery in general. You're going to feel it more. And the muscles may not develop as well too. You know, I see that a lot with people who skip out on taking care of flexibility and mobility and all that kind of stuff. Okay. So it's so important that you guys do this when you go and you weight lift, especially because different parts of your cycle, if you are somebody who's naturally cycling, it will be really obvious when you are not feeling it, you know? So sometimes actually I use this structure to kind of give myself feedback. So like if my body is feeling a certain way in a certain part of my cycle, I will, you know, do my warm up and I'm starting my dynamic stuff and my body will just feel like complete crap. And I'll be like, I'm going to listen to her. She doesn't want to weight lift today. <laughs> and then maybe I'll just go do like some casual cardio or I'll go into some mobility work or some stretching or some specific flexibility, you know, whatever it is. And then I'll just leave, you know, that's good. No, that's ideal. When we push through our body's cues of being tired and sore, you know, your joints hurt, you know, then you're going to be, again, higher risk of injury, but also going to just stress your body out more than it needs to. And it's counterproductive to your body at that point. Okay. And then opposite, you know, if you're feeling like, let's go, like I'm want to rush through this dynamic warm up because I've got so much energy and I feel hella strong today, you know, still finish your dynamic warm up (laughs) because then you can put all of that energy to use. But that warm up will just tell you like, yeah, let's go. Let's do it today. Like let's lift heavy. You know, the last thing I'm going to little say is another little bonus fry. Please don't use pre-workout as artificial energy to lift. It is not good for your kidneys, (laughs) uh, depending on which brand, you know, but at the same time, it's giving you It's removing that kind of intuition of being in your body and knowing when you're lifting just right, not enough, too much, because it gives you all this artificial energy. And I know this from firsthand experience, guys. I used to use NO Explode back in the day. You know, a lot of people know C4, I think, remained pretty popular nowadays. It was like basically the sister of C4. It was a different company, but same kind of effects. And I was always overtraining. I feel so bad for my body when I was in my first few years of being a personal trainer because that's what everybody did. Everybody did pre-workout and then they slammed a workout. And even though I may have looked smaller and stuff, like I was sore all the time. And I remember my ex at the time being like, are you supposed to be sore all the time like this? And I was like, you don't understand the fitness. (laughs) 
<laughs> but in reality, I just, I didn't understand um, a better way to fitness. And so I hope that you guys can take this conversation today and have better connection to yourself and know a better way to fitness for yourself, for example. Like just, just take the time to, you know, develop a real good program for yourself and use the resources that are available to you to do that. Okay. So that's it for today's episode. I hope that it's helpful for you. And I hope that you step into the gym with a little more confidence and that you feel like you have direction and understanding of exactly what the F you went in there to do. Okay. Share this episode with anybody you think could benefit from knowing how to better use their time in the gym for more success and just an effective workout altogether because everybody needs to have effective workouts. Otherwise, what are you doing? You know what I mean? But celebrate your strength and nourishment, walk with confidence, and I'll catch you next week on another episode of Rebel Wellness. What did you think about that episode? If you enjoyed it, I hope that you would come join my community on Instagram at Rebel Wellness Podcast or my coaching page at Kaylee Loren or both. I would love to see your name pop up on my new follows list. I might say hello if I catch you. And I would also like to invite you to come check out my website, coachkales.com. If you're interested in seeing any more of the educational learning resources I have created for you, I have a whole ton of amazing free downloads that you can like dip your toe in the water of what working with me looks like. And if you are really vibing with what I have to say and how I teach it, come explore my courses that are available for purchase. They are all do it yourself in the near future. I plan to have some awesome group coaching that will be all live. So stay tuned for that. And the best way to know when I'm going to launch those is through my monthly wellness newsletter, which is my hand curated, not AR generated monthly, all things health and wellness newsletter that I created to be your new favorite resource for staying up to date with the latest in the health world, self-care resources that I've created, and a bunch of the clean beauty picks that I personally use myself and a whole lot more, as well as early access and discounts to anything that I create in the future for specifically my newsletter sign up. So if you'd like to sign up, head to coachkales.com and add yourself to my mailing list. Last but not least, I would absolutely love it if you would help our podcast grow by simply sharing a rating or review wherever you stream and are listening to me right now and share it on your social medias or text it to some friends or family members if this episode resonated and was something that you think could help somebody else because I really would love to help anybody in your circle if I've been helping you. So I absolutely am so grateful that you're here. And if you listened all the way through, you are a real one. So all right, Rebel, until next episode.